Didn't I just say I wasn't going to do this no more? <laughs> Didn't I just say I was not going to do this no more? Hi, I'm Tasi, and welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome home. And if you're a new subscriber, make yourself at home by clicking that subscribe button. So, um, we need to talk. We, we definitely need to talk. Uh, I don't even know where to start because <laughs> there's like a lot to, a lot to cover. So first of all, hi and hello to all the people that are new on my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I actually don't know the exact number of how many of y'all it is. I just know that it's probably like 40, maybe. Maybe it's 40 new people, I don't know. But I'm glad that you guys enjoyed my previous video, which was another installment of the What Happened To series. If you guys have not seen it already, just by chance, it is the What Happened To The Rangers Unsung Trendsetters video. So yeah, a lot of y'all are here because of that. A lot of y'all are here because of my Tyler story time. And again, if you haven't seen that, I got a whole playlist now like I got a whole playlist y'all can go and watch it for yourself so yeah we can get that out the way shout out to y'all welcome home make yourself comfortable I want to say you're gonna see more content but we just went how many weeks without content so I feel kind of bad to even tell y'all that but like hopefully now I'm back on track hopefully now everything is smooth sailing especially because it's getting warmer outside but yeah just shout out to them welcome them guys and here we are so you guys know that a while back I had said that I want to kind of not do chit chat videos or chit chat get ready with me videos life update videos because to a degree I feel like it's annoying to a degree I feel like it's like irritating as hell when youtubers have like a long hiatus and then they want to come back with a video just talking like girl we don't care just get straight into the content you know me personally though sometimes I do want to see people's life updates sometimes I do want to know like what's going on but not every damn time like honest to god there are certain youtubers I follow baby get back to your shit we get it a lot went on in your your side of the neck of the woods we get that but if ain't nobody die please don't bother me like I ain't gonna lie I ain't gonna lie I ain't gonna lie I I be like that sometimes I'm gonna be the first person to be real about it and say it sometimes I be like that because if it ain't no life or death situation I don't care about the fact that yeah I was just so drained guys like Girl, I was drained from working at retail. I was drained from working at a fucking sports stadium. People get drained. We get it. Girl, go back to the makeup look. Like, you know? So, yeah, for a minute, I did say that I wasn't going to do these things anymore. But, y'all, we need to talk. <laughs> we, we legit need to talk about some things, okay? Because it is, like, multiple things that has caused me to be distant or to be away from not only my channel, but like social media as a whole. And that's why I feel like we need to talk because usually if I have a YouTube hiatus, you can find me on Instagram. If I have an Instagram hiatus, you can usually find me on YouTube or I'll be like retweeting or tweeting something on Twitter. Like, you know, I'm present somewhere. I basically just had a whole blackout and just didn't interact with anything on any platform. I have missed like weeks worth of news, information, all of that. Like I have not been on social media whatsoever. So we we yeah let's come together real quick let's come together let's talk because girl girl <sighs> all right so i don't know if this needs a trigger warning but i'm gonna give one just in case i will be talking about mental health i will be talking about mental health i will be talking about self-harm and you know the big s i will be talking about stuff like that so if that is sensitive for y'all maybe don't watch this video but for those that want to stay uh buckle up because i'm gonna be vulnerable again which is a rare occurrence so be prepared okay so first and foremost right i had already mentioned back then when i was first getting finished with the tyler series that a lot of old emotions were starting to come up and i was starting to get you know like really depressed like i was starting to recognize just how much this man did me dirty and it was affecting me right believe it or not he is not the reason as to why i went on this hiatus he is not the reason why i ended up having like a mental 
situation like he he's not the reason at all what it was was that i was already getting drained from doing the video about the rangers like y'all know by this point the what happened to series always takes a lot of energy it takes a lot of work a lot of time out of my schedule so i'm not gonna lie it was draining but it was rewarding and I felt good about it because now it's like, this is like what the fourth installment. So I'm adjusted to it now. Like I have a whole routine, a whole schedule. Like I, I have things ready at the go. You feel me? So realistically, right after the what happened to the Rangers video, I was going to give you guys another video, but that's when everything went left. Like it was low key, like what, a few days after that video, I think. I think that's what it was. I think that's what it was. It was either a few days or it was like the following week or something like that. I don't know. But basically while y'all were watching the Rangers video, I was recording a video. I was recording a wig review and I hated how the wig came out. I tried to make it work so bad. I tried so hard to make it work, but it was just something about it that I just was not feeling. And I have a whole, I still have the video. I still have the video. If you guys want to see that video, I will give it to you. But me personally, I hated it. 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 It was terrible. And I'm just like, yeah, we just gonna have to postpone this. I'm gonna have to come up with another video. I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna do something else. So that's when I had asked y'all on Instagram. And I believe I asked y'all on here too. What are some questions that y'all want me to answer regarding the Tyler situation? Because during that situation, a lot of y'all were very opinionated about stuff. And I wanted to give you guys some answers and some clarity on certain situations in case, you know, you really wanted to know the answer. But I did also kind of feel iffy about it because I'm like, I've been talking about this man for like, what, two months going on three now? I don't want this man, if he is watching me, to feel like, oh, she's obsessed with me or whatever, whatever. Like, a pride thing. It was very much a pride thing because this is very much my channel. I can do what I want to do. But I didn't want to, like, make it seem as if, like, my whole entire life was dedicated to him or, like, oh, she's still grieving. She's still hurt. She's still this. She's still that. So I was even contemplating that. But I'm like, no, let me give it to him because they genuinely have questions. So y'all asked me questions and I was getting ready to film that Q&A video. And then life happened. What do I mean by life happened? So I was already starting to kind of slip into like a depressive episode. And it was it was happening very slowly. It was happening very slowly, but I thought I was handling it and I thought I was catching it. And turns out that I didn't, but I was still like functioning. Like it was like a like a high functioning depression. Like I'm getting the content out, but you know, I'm not really taking care of myself like that, or I'm getting the content out, but I'm rotting away in my bed, not doing anything. Like I'm, I'm not, you know, like I'm not really all that present, but then it got to a point to where everything became too much because as a lot of y'all know, I still live at home with my mom and my siblings and stuff like that. I help my mom out a lot. So I'm still here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm still here. And there was a point in time where I'm watching my siblings. My mom is at work and she tells me that she might have to leave work early and go to the hospital. And I'm like, why? And she basically is telling me that she doesn't know if she's having an anxiety attack or a panic attack. And she's never had either one of those before. But she basically started to say that she's not sure if it's one of those or if she's having like a heart attack. But nonetheless, my mom is at work and she starts to have a lot of chest pains and she started to have a lot of migraines and she started to have like this brain fog or whatever. Like that's the way that she described it to me. We still don't know what's going on. But basically I remember just being there. Like it, it was like any other day that I would like watch my siblings while my mom does like overtime or something like that. Like it was nothing different. But when she texted me that I'm kind of like, okay, all right. But she ended up not going to the hospital. But even then I'm like, okay, it, it might not, you know, like maybe, maybe she just too much caffeine, you know, I'm, I'm kind of chilling. But the next day, she still went to work, but it seemed like it got worse. And I knew that it got worse because maybe I'm telling too much of my business. I don't really care. But me and my brother that comes after me, we have the same dad. 
my two younger siblings have a different dad. I always know some shit is popping off when their dad shows up. When their dad shows up and stays at our house, that's when I knew like, okay, some something's not right. Something's not right. Cause even he had to talk to me and be like, yeah, she might have to go into the hospital. So he's basically there just in case some shit goes left or we need to ride somewhere or we need to stop at my aunt's house or whatever. That's when I knew like, okay, this might be a little bit more serious. But even then I'm like, maybe not, you know, like, like maybe, maybe, maybe it's not like that. Maybe it's not that deep. And then the day comes where she finally goes to the hospital and she's updating me with a lot of stuff. And I don't even because because I don't want to like speak things into existence. I don't want to say anything. I don't really want to touch that topic just in case like, you know, because the power of the tongue is very fucking real. And honestly, like it was one of those situations where I kind of mentally checked out once the conversations were happening. But all I remember is that there was a mention of an EKG. And the next thing I know, my mom is in the hospital for pretty much majority of the day. And even then, I tried to be calm, I tried to get it together, but I'm not gonna lie, the word EKG, it terrified me. It, it, it really just had me on the edge of my seat. I'm like, is my mom coming home? I don't know. But then again, what made it worse is that my uncle comes over. Why am I getting so many visits from people? Why is my family coming to visit me, checking up on us and saying, are you okay? That made my anxiety flare the fuck up. And that is when I mentally spiraled. That was the moment when I mentally spiraled because I'm like, we have never in life gotten this many visits. Like I can be real. My whole entire family, we are introverts. We are, we are introverts. If it's not a holiday party, we don't really have anybody over our house. If we do even have a party, it's like, baby it ain't even about to be everybody it's about to be whoever show up which is probably gonna be them three people that we mess with okay so the fact that these people kept checking in on us it disturbed me because I'm like y'all have never done this before y'all don't do things like this unless it's a serious situation or a serious emergency I'm disturbed and what made it worse was that my uncle he came with food he came with groceries even now, I'm like low key, like having the anxious feeling come up all over again. Like, cause that, that really disturbed me to my core. When I seen him at my front porch, I was already like, huh? Okay, I'm nervous. The groceries though, like y'all, I genuinely was terrified. I was terrified because I'm like, is my mom not coming home? Is my mom dead? Like what's what's going on because I really thought that they were going to give her like um some like I forget what it's called but basically like my mom has a uh, some type of gastric something not a gastric bypass not a gastric sleeve it, it has something to do with like the way that your body processes gas like sometimes that affects her or whatever I just chopped it up to maybe it's gonna be something like that it's gonna be a usual routine they're gonna give her like some medicine or they're gonna tell her like oh just lay off sugar or something like that EKGs family visits motherfuckers got groceries bitch I'm scared like I'm just I'm literally like terrified I'm terrified and ultimately it's like she spent all those hours at the hospital the whole entire day at the hospital and when she finally gets home she still doesn't have an answer as to what it is but she just keeps saying that like if it gets bad they said come the next day and now it's at a point where she has to do like weekly hospital visits because they they want to just run as many tests as possible and it, it it's just starting to affect me like it started to affect me a lot because I'm like I am not ready to lose a parent right now um that's just number one so like that really that really was the reason why like I halted completely when it came to majority of my content because I can't even fake come on here and be like hi guys how are you and I know that like if I take my eye off my mom she might fuck around and have a heart attack and I don't have a mom anymore like you know like I, I just couldn't risk it so I was more so like on standby that wasn't requested of me that wasn't asked of me but I just I don't know like I was just on standby because I'm like I don't know what's happening like she had to take off work and everything for a few days like that again this is when I knew it was serious like it 
y'all it messed with me it definitely did so no i'm not i'm not about to come on camera and do no wig review that i already hate i already don't like the wig i'm not about to come on here and talk about this dude that i don't even mess with anymore that i don't even talk to no more like i'm not i, I can't even i can't even fake come on here and be happy go lucky and put on a brave face because no, it, it was showing it was showing it was showing like it was bad okay so i'm like yeah no i'm just gonna take a break but mind you the break was only supposed to be for that week it was only supposed to be for that week what happened after that i just somehow fell into my depression and i just started really not feeling like life was worth living because i noticed how close my birthday was approaching fun fact my birthday was march 10th i know i know i know yeah um i just started to feel really depressed i felt like nothing in life was really worth it anymore and it partially did have to do with like you know the situation with my mom because i'm just thinking in the back of my head like am i really at that age where i'm old enough to lose parents like i know anybody can die for various amounts of reasons but like am i really getting to that age to where like my parents are gonna start dying off because i have young parents you know they had me when they were a teenager well they were 18 but still a teenager 18 but yeah like i had young parents so you know like i'm i'm not expecting for this to happen right now i'm not prepared for this i'm not ready for this and it also made me reflect on like my life in general because i didn't plan on still being in my mom's house by this age i didn't plan on half of the things that went wrong in my life to happen to me and it just started to kind of compile on top of each other and i just got to a point to where if i can be completely honest like completely transparent y'all i almost didn't make it to my 26th birthday i almost didn't i was fully content with it i was ready i didn't really hesitate or even try to stop it um but ultimately as you can see i'm still here so you know like it is what it is but i'm not gonna lie like i i just i just didn't i just didn't want to do anything anymore i started to have these thoughts that like i didn't have friends and i didn't have anybody that genuinely loved me which is very fucking stupid because if you only knew if you only knew how connected me and all of my friends are like we were literally talking during that whole entire time too that i'm feeling depressed like i have friends <laughs> i have friends i'm in contact with my friends but for some reason my brain was just telling me that like all of my friends hated me nobody really liked me nobody really would give a fuck if i was gone i also started to unintentionally compare myself as well because majority of my friends are definitely in their career field they are content with their life you know one of my friends she didn't started a family she got a house like everybody's doing good and i'm so proud of all of my friends for how far they came in life but i just can't help but feel like you are so behind like bitch you are so you are so behind you are so left in the dust and that's why they don't want to see you anymore they don't want to hang out with you because you're the loser of the group and nobody wants to be your friend anymore but again it, it's delusion it's delusion <laughs> it's like i'm i'm aware of how delusional it sounds like the common sense part of my brain is fully aware that that is stupid as hell to think because again we've been in contact we've been in contact they've been talking to me we're still friends like there is literally nothing there is no indication that these people hate me i just felt that way randomly okay but then there's the emotional side of my brain where i started to realize how many years it's been since i've like actually been around them and kicked it with them and it made me sad because i'm like what if they've been linking up this whole entire time behind my back again delusional because that didn't happen but but uh it was just yeah it just wasn't a pretty sight so i uh slowly but surely was just not wanting to be here and was contemplating if i wanted to make it to the age of 26. i'm not gonna go into graphic details i'm not gonna really say too much or do too much with that but um all i can say is there were plans there were things that were going to be executed me being one of them 
Um, I'm sorry. That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, I just fell into a really dark place. And once my birthday had rolled around, y'all, I didn't even have plans for my birthday. Like, I didn't have anything that I really wanted to do. I didn't even take any pictures on my birthday. Like, I literally just went out to eat with my family and we came home. And I had like a cake. But, you know, we, yeah, I didn't really celebrate it. Like, my birthday was, and then not only that, my birthday was on a Sunday, which was a really weird day. But, you know, like, I just, I literally just turned 26, and that was it. Like, I literally just made it to another year, and I just moved on with the rest of my life, and that was it. Because I was still fairly depressed. I was still, like, just not wanting to be present in the moment, you know? And even on social media, you know, like I'll usually have something. I'll usually have something for y'all to enjoy on my birthday or the day after at least. Um, I'll usually like, oh, the week of my birthday week or my birthday weekend or something of that nature. Like I'll have something. I'll have something for y'all. I'll have like a cute little fake photo shoot or whatever. Like I'll be having something. I had nothing. I gave y'all nothing because I didn't give myself anything. I was over life okay I, I was over it I didn't really care um it just it wasn't a pretty sight it wasn't it wasn't a pretty sight and I can be real about that the only thing that kind of kept me level-headed was the responses that I was getting on the Rangers video like seeing seeing a lot of my statements play out a lot of link-ups and conversations being had that definitely brightened up my day um shout out to Corey shout out to Spotlight shout out to Deontay aka Spank well formerly known as Spank but yeah like shout out to y'all thank you for even engaging with my content in the first place because y'all genuinely did not have to that was really what kept my spirits up because I'm like okay I'm doing something I'm doing something right because these are people that have been in the cut for a minute they came out they came out and they came out specifically because I brought them out like that that's an achievement within itself you know um I don't it, again if you guys are like subscribed to me and you check the community tab I try to like be as consistent on the community tab as I am on Instagram but it seems like y'all be like really engaging with me on Instagram more than y'all do on here which is why sometimes like I'll ask Instagram a question and then come over here and do it but um I'm gonna try to get better with that so just keep tabs on me if you are subscribed to me like keep tabs on that community tab so you can know what's going on but as I posted in the community tab if you guys have seen it Langston and Day Day are actually in the process of being interviewed for like a documentary and the documentary isn't named yet but it has something to do with like the local dance trends of like the 2010s and the early 2000s and stuff I'm not going to give myself credit for that because I don't think that my video is the reason why they're being interviewed I don't think that my video is the reason why any of this is playing out I think it's just divine timing you know what I'm saying but even with situations like that we had Langston and that was it <laughs> we had Langston Julian be popping out sometimes but he's still kind of sort of in the cut and don't really come around when it's like Langston Day Day and them but Day Day oh honey he's been out of it he's been in the back like he he been living his life he gone according to him he don't even live in LA no more like girl what and the fact that we finally finally got to lay eyes on Day Day and see that he's alive that's great <laughs> that's that's uh that's amazing so seeing things like that definitely kept my spirits high because again it's all about divine timing at the end of the day that just lets me know that I am on the right track and I am doing something positive and I am doing something good and you know who knows how any of this is going to play out so it definitely made me kind of buck up a little bit but yeah I was still I was still in the slump I was still uh I was still in that dark place but it definitely would keep me distracted for a moment and then you know I would probably fall back into it but every time it's like I started to get stronger and I started to not feel as bad anymore and once my birthday came like the day of my birthday oh my god why did it feel like winter time 
it's been hot this whole entire time. It's hot now. I don't know if y'all can hear it. I hope not. But my fan is in the window because, baby, it's too hot. But, yeah, it was so super duper cold on my birthday. That made me even more depressed because I'm like, dang, for real. But then for the following day, it reaches 70 degrees. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. That pissed me off. That made me so mad. That made me so mad because I'm just like, you cannot be serious. But I, I must say, ever since it got warm outside and ever since, you know, again, like I, I see now that I have a reason to live. I have a little purpose, a little some, you know, it it made me kind of get off the slump. It made me just like really buck up and be like, OK, girl, let's go. Let's be here. So, yeah, uh, questions about my disappearance. That is the reason why. And guys, I'm I'm OK. I'm OK. Um, I just know now that maybe I need to actually like go talk with a doctor and possibly get like antidepressants. Maybe um, maybe it's about time that I just cough up that money and buy me a therapist, you know, because I can't keep I can't keep going through this. I can't keep having these random moments of just not wanting to be anymore because believe it or not, this is not the first time that this has happened. It's just the first time that we got very close. <laughs> very 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 close to um going through with certain plans but yeah um so yeah um there's that on that now let's just vent a little bit about content creation and my content overall so when it comes to content i have been struggling i have been struggling even when i was posting it um i don't know if y'all could tell but to me, I could tell, I could definitely tell, but I was just trying to get more consistent. I was definitely trying to not let you guys down, be a little bit more um, personal out there. I'm trying to get more professional if you guys couldn't tell, but it's hard. It's hard. It really is because I'm not a robot. I'm a person with feelings. So it's, it's difficult sometimes, but the content dry spell has been going on for like a little minute and it partially just has to do with. I don't know like I guess it kind of feeds into my mental health a little bit too like there's a part of me where I feel kind of sort of stupid and ridiculous putting as much time as I'm putting in to making content on various platforms because you know again I'm, I'm not at a place where I thought I would be by the age of 26 like I I just don't really feel accomplished you know so it was hard for me to sit in front of this camera and do TikTok videos and record like anything take pictures do anything like i just didn't feel up to it oh i forgot to tell y'all so my car won't start so a, a bitch ain't even going nowhere you feel me i can't even go nowhere to clear my head like yeah it's it's yeah it's been a lot um i need to renew my tags <laughs> yeah um I told y'all I was depressed. When you're depressed, you don't take care of yourself. You don't take care of your bills. You don't take care of nothing. I need a new ID. I need a new, I need new tags. Lord, I'm going to do it this week, y'all. I'm going to do it this week, I promise. Um, but yeah, anyways, like I just, I have this, this thought process for right now, like this mentality right now where I'm grieving the version of myself that my 16 to 10 year old self thought that I was going to end up as and I'm trying to find that bitch she ain't here she ain't here um I'm trying to get it together I'm trying to like you know boost myself up but I would be lying if I said that it wasn't getting a little bit difficult because while I am also grieving that version of myself I'm also trying to work with the version of myself that I have and it's just getting really difficult simply because like it's so much to do Y'all just heard me say that my car won't start. It's just so much to do. Like I'm also in the process of trying to move out, trying to find a new place. I am still, believe it or not, I am still trying to find out how I can go back to school because I very much want my own space. I want my own money. In order for me to do that, I have to get a full-time job, so I can't be a full-time student. But can I handle being a full-time worker and being a part-time student, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I'm doubting myself, I don't know. But it's like, I'm good for working myself until I burn out. 
and I'm trying to not do that anymore. Like, I'm definitely trying to, like, give it up to God, you know? And as y'all know, every time that I've tried to get a job, life has told me, girl, we just said, stick to YouTube. So I'm still even trying to figure out, like, do I just want to do me or like like what should I do you know like I'm still kind of going through those thoughts and going through those emotions but all in all I still am actively trying to find a place and move out because you know it's just it's been time and I've been trying to do it but you know I, I've been trying to like get a lot of stuff together for my personal sake and my personal self but looking at what I'm doing now the reason why it's so sad is because in a way I'm settling because this again this this wasn't what I thought I was going to be doing by the time that I hit 26 so in a way it's like I have to pray on it a little bit more um I have to be a little bit more patient with myself I have to forgive myself I have to be a little bit more humble about you know me and how I see myself but it's just been difficult you know like it's, it's just been hard like I feel like why are you over here like some teenager whose whole life is the internet and you're not even getting paid you know like I'm not even getting paid yet but like I don't know I don't know I just I feel like I don't deserve the positivity that I've been getting I guess like maybe it's a is this a new level of imposter syndrome I don't know but yeah like I just kind of had that in the back of my mind too which also contributes to why like content really been lacking for real for real but it's also been lacking because like TikTok's algorithm now very weird I don't even want to have a discussion about the alleged TikTok ban I, I don't even want to talk about that I don't even care about that Instagram just sucks at this point like I'm so over trying with Instagram but every time I'm getting ready to delete Instagram that's when they put my videos on somebody's explore page and it goes up so I, I don't even know what to do with that anymore and YouTube is pretty much the only social media that I give attention to but YouTube essentially takes a lot of work and I know that some of y'all y'all want instant gratification y'all want now so it's like okay here's a picture here's like a, a five second TikTok, and here's this and here's that like I'm trying to feed everybody but I just don't have no passion for it no more like I just don't have the drive for it no more it just seems like everybody oh and Twitter is just hell Twitter has disappointed me now it, it has very much disappointed me so I'm just now in a space of like girl I don't even know what I'm doing no more I'm just here pretty much like I'm, I'm just here don't pay attention to me I don't know what's going on but yeah the content has been very dry I know it y'all know it it's it's been very it's been very dry um it has not been consistent obviously but yeah it just hasn't been given and that was the other thing as to why y'all didn't get a video for a good amount of time too because I was trying to figure out like with all of these people that are now subscribed to me like all these new people how do I want them to be introduced to me other than the what happened to series because the the what happened to series is just a series how are we going to introduce them to me as an individual and show them like hey this is the typical average content that I make on my page until we get to that point like how do I do that because do I want to come back to YouTube and these people find out that I'm a depressed ass bitch that still live at home and I oh like do I want to do that but clearly we're here now so <laughs> yeah so now y'all know so yeah part of it was also some overthinking too because I don't even think that y'all care like a lot of this might just be in my head and I'm just like my biggest worst enemy but yeah that's just how I've been feeling lately like I've just been really feeling like nothing is worth it anymore nothing is exciting anymore like life just stopped being life for some reason and I'm just like I want to leave like I don't want to be here you know and I also want to say like this was irresponsible on my part and I'm fully aware of that but um I fully stand with Palestine fully fully and I have to say that ever since it was brought to my awareness what was happening in Gaza that has also been contributing to my mental health like 
it, it makes me very upset. It makes me very sad, very depressed. I've been vocal about it on my Instagram, but again, I should have been vocal on it here. I should have been vocal everywhere, but I've been vocal about it on Instagram, Twitter, you know, but it just, it just, it breaks my heart. Like part of that, how do I say this without YouTube getting, ugh, I'm trying to figure it out. Seeing babies and children that are no longer breathing that will do something to your mental health 100 percent. and there was a point in time where i had to take a break from even talking about it or you know going on social media for a certain amount of time because it genuinely just made me depressed it made me so depressed seeing the images and the videos and keeping the updates with basan i hope that's how you pronounce her name i'm not sure if that's her accent that's saying it or if i'm saying it wrong but yeah like just just seeing everything play out it just it makes me feel like the world is just an ugly place to live in so like why am i here you know like like what is the point what is the point of all of it so it's just yeah everything has been at a standstill everything has been at a halt for me because i've just been trying to get my bearings i've just been trying to like find something happy something worth being proud of something worth anything because it just don't it just don't give like life is not given so the content ain't given and when the content's not given I just give up like I just yeah I just have not been in my flow I have not been in my mojo but hopefully this week I will be a little bit better hopefully this week everything will like peak up and I can start putting it out again so yeah that's enough about me um now I have decided that I'm gonna answer a few questions about the Tyler situation on this here video because I did promise you guys a Q&A video but the reason why I decided not to go through with the Q&A video is because again I didn't want to come off as like I was obsessive or I was like making my whole entire life about this man you know like I wanted to just kind of play it cool um but but also also um <laughs> the questions the questions that y'all had um it predominantly didn't even have to do with Tyler it, it didn't even have to really do with me and Tyler it had everything to do with Bianca like y'all have some real life smoke for Bianca and that is hilarious like I listen I'm not I'm not condoning I'm not you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to give out negativity. We're trying to be positive here, but y'all legit have smoke with that girl bad because the amount of questions that I had about Bianca and our friendship, I'm just like, oof. Okay. Um, even the series itself, why is the part with Tyler and Bianca the one that has the highest amount of views? I have a clip. I don't know if y'all even I'm assuming that y'all watch my clips, but like my analytics show me that it's usually more new subscribers that watch it than the old ones. But I upload YouTube shorts as well because it helps me with my algorithm and it helps like new people find my page or whatever. But I don't know if y'all seen this one clip that I had. Oh, the comments. Oh, the comments was getting on Bianca ass. Oh my God. They, they, yeah, nobody likes her. And I didn't <laughs> like... I don't really care if y'all don't like her but like for the sake of me this is a situation that is very much dead to me so like i'm i'm not gonna send out a witch hunt i'm not gonna tell y'all like yeah let's bash her let's do this let's do that honey i'm i'm above that now you know that don't move me that don't phase me no more it is what it is but y'all have really been going hard on that girl okay so i know that next story time it better be her story time i get it you ain't got to tell me. You ain't got to tell me. Because, woo, 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 woo. Like, y'all, damn. So that was another reason why I decided, like, let's not even make the Q&A video because we don't even have enough questions about me and Tyler to make that video. It's going to be a Q&A about Bianca. Like, I don't even want that. So, yeah, for those of you that were waiting, I am going to read off some of the questions that you guys had. And it's literally, it's literally like probably five questions, I think, because some of them got repetitive. So I'm just like, okay, it's just going to be those few questions and that's it. Okay, so the first question I want to answer is what made you stay? So 
So I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be completely honest. I feel like, because I'm still kind of working through it, still trying to reason with it, but I feel like the main reason why I stayed somewhat loyal to Tyler and went through all that bullshit to be with him is because, like, obviously everything stems from your childhood. And I can be real and say that, like, I have been emotionally neglected a lot and he gave me at least the illusion that there was somebody out there that cared about me and genuinely wanted to love me and shower me with affection so like if you noticed in the series there's a lot of moments where he's like this dream guy there's a lot of moments where he's just like practically this perfect person and then he'll go back to doing what he usually is doing like he'll go back to his usual self and he'll be emotionally unavailable and distant and just lack communication and I guess I just stayed because I was still chasing after that version of him because I know that that version of him exists. So I guess I was staying because of that. And it also had to do with the fact that like, I was consistently believing that he changed because in a way he did, but he just would not grow up. Like he just would not, he just would not develop into a new person, you know? And I'm not, I shouldn't even say this. Um, but I have had some new developments about him since I uploaded that. All I'm going to say is, all I'm going to say is this. I am now made aware of that there is now a third child. This child is recent. It wasn't a, a child that was made while me and him were talking. But um, there is now a third child. And from what I understand, he, uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't really treat that relationship that well either. Um, so... You know, I, I can't even say like, oh, he changed, but he just didn't change for me. Like, nah, he ain't changed. <laughs> like, from, from what I understand, that man is still the same exact person. So yeah, like, I feel like that was the biggest component as to why, like, I was always connected to him and kind of with him because I like the way that he treated me those two percents of the time. And not only that, it's also just a situation of like, like I said before, I do believe in divine timing. But what I didn't understand back then is that sometimes the universe will give you a test to see like, are you going to take the bait? And I feel like that third time that he came around, that was a test. And I failed. And yeah, like that, that wasn't supposed to happen. And I think that when I came to my revelation, when I was in college, it should have just stayed that it should have just stayed a revelation. It shouldn't have been a let's reach out and apologize. Let's do this. Let's do that. I, I shouldn't have done that because I essentially opened the floodgates. We had already been done and I shouldn't have I shouldn't have gave him any access to me. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that answers the question a little bit more in depth. Now, the second question, I do want to clarify this because maybe I should have clarified it in the video. Um, but the second question says, why is it his fault the other guy was trash? That's what I don't understand. No shade. So no shade taken because I again, I should have explained that a little bit more in depth. Um, but I wouldn't say that it was necessarily Tyler's fault that I ended up with the other guy. Again, if you don't know what we're talking about, you got to go watch the series. But I wouldn't say that it was Tyler's fault that I ended up with the other guy. Maybe I chose the words wrong. But what I'm saying is that like, it was a domino effect of situations. Because every time that I am with Tyler and we're together, but then we fall out, it's always a situation of me just being in a really weird emotional state. Like I'm not emotionally or mentally okay after me and Tyler are done with each other. So I tend to not make rash decisions. I don't act on impulse, but I still seek that love and affection and attention because you had me up here. You know, you, you had me up here. You had me feeling like I was up here. You loved me to the point where my head is this high and then you just drop me and I'm, I'm falling like that. <laughs> I'm falling from that drop. Like, you know, like it's from all the way up here and down. It's not no gradual. Okay. Our relationship started to decline. It's like, no, you literally will have me here and then I plummet. So in a way it's like, it's not his fault by any means, but it's like, I would have never nine times out of 10, I would have never even gave that man the time of day if it wasn't for 
the fact that Tyler had me like that because I really was just not emotionally okay at that time I was not emotionally intelligent at that time so all the decisions that I was making it was not it, it wasn't a smart decision it wasn't a smart decision and I do regret it heavily I do regret majority of how I did a lot of stuff in the aftermath of us but all I was saying or like at least attempting to highlight is that he always seems to take me out of something he always seems to like come into my life and disrupt the order and again like I said in the video if it wasn't for the fact that I was under the impression that I was going to see him the following day I wouldn't have even left the house that day from what I understand now, the guy in the black car, he probably still would have tried to talk to me. He probably eventually would have still tried to pull up on me, get my number and all that other stuff. Because now that I know what I know about that guy, he low-key been stalking me the whole entire time. Like he low-key was, was keeping an eye out on me this whole entire time. And I just wasn't aware of it. But, um, but yeah, like I'm not going to say like it would have never happened. But I feel like I would have been in a way better mental state to know like I'm staying away from this dude. I don't want to deal with this dude. I don't want to talk to nobody because I'm being loyal to my man you know what I'm saying like it just it, it's a cause and effect type of thing but I would never say that it was Tyler's fault I would never say that it's just that I was trying to highlight just how much this man gets me out of my order like out of my body and how it was like a like a like just a, a series of events that unfolded and while I'm over here in this messed up relationship he's on campus my college campus being happy and getting into different relationships and stuff so you know like I just wanted to highlight that because that was my truth you know like that was just what happened or at least how I processed everything that's not saying that it's his fault that that man was who he was like I don't think anybody could have predicted that but you know like it just it just really stung a little bit that like similar to Mark why do I always end up dating people that heavily reflect all the negative aspects of this man like it just but yeah to clarify no it's not his fault at all like I never tried to insinuate that anything was his fault but um hopefully that clears it up because that was never my intention okay and the last one it turns out we only got three questions because the other ones I <laughs> girl it's it's about Bianca we ain't gonna answer those so the last one says if he did want you back, what would you say? Are you open to it or would you be upset? <sighs> okay, so if he just one day woke up and decided that he wanted me back, I would have to say no. I would have to say no because again, like I'm off the situation. I don't really want to go through that ever again. Like I don't want to go through that with that man anymore. Um, that's number one. Number two, I can be real and say that I am still working through my pride issues. Um, I can be a very prideful person. And I just feel like besides that, because it genuinely, it, it could very much have to do with each other. But I also just feel like you had three chances with me to get it right. I'm not about to be your fallback plan because now that you got three kids and and it didn't work out with none of the baby mamas now it's oh I should have picked you it should have been you the whole time like I'm not about to be nobody's leftovers are you serious like now that you in a rocky stage of your life now you want to come back to me uh no like that th that will never happen I'm sorry like it's just not gonna happen and again maybe I'm just coming from a very prideful mean place I don't mean to but yeah nah we ain't doing none of that that's just that's just first and foremost but not only that, I can also say that, like, I don't know the pain that this man has caused any of his baby mamas because, again, like, I've, I haven't dealt with this man, okay? I was out the loop with a lot of stuff, was late to the party with a lot of stuff when it pertained to him. I don't know what type of relationships he got with his baby mamas. I come from a family where it takes a village to raise a kid. I would never disregard or disrespect his children, but I feel like how do your baby mamas behave because I don't have time for this bitch feeling some type of way because I want to take the kids to the zoo but she don't want me taking them to the zoo because she don't want nobody having to pay for her kids or some weird shit like that like baby if you want to still fuck them you could have just fucked them you could have kept them actually you know I don't want to go through no bs like that and then like again me personally the way that I was raised like we just don't do stuff like that and I would never 
inflict harm on a child or do anything wrong to a child like I just I'm not that type of person but I'm not gonna lie like knowing that the two children because I'm still wrapping my head around the third one <laughs> but the two children that I am now aware of you know essentially they were made while I was still in cahoots with this man and it was it was basically kept a secret until he couldn't keep the secret no more I don't know how I would feel being around them being present with them you know what I'm saying like I don't know how I would genuinely react because I would never intentionally be rude harmful or whatever but I feel like me knowing me I might be emotionally detached like I might not be present as like a parental figure or something of that nature like I, I don't know how I would behave I don't think I'm I don't think I'm that mature to be able to take care of kids that were a secret from me you know like I don't think I would be able to do that and I know a lot of people have this idea of like oh well them his kids them ain't your kids so you ain't gotta worry about that but again like that's just not how I was raised like of course like yeah he gotta take majority of the brunt work because you brought them into this world you know what I'm saying but I just feel like a child is a child at the end of the day and the way that I was raised I was raised in an environment where I had aunts and uncles that were only my aunts and uncles by marriage they still come to family reunions they still are my aunts and uncles and they've been divorced for like 30 years but that's still family to me you know so for me it's like that's just that's just me you know that's just how I was raised so it's not as easy for me to just be like oh them his kids you know, like that just don't even sound right to me. Like, yeah, those his kids, but it's like, what am I doing here if they not being seen as my kids as well? Like that just, that just don't, that don't hit for me. Like, I feel like regardless of who it is, we should be able to go out in public one day and be like, oh, I think the baby will look cute in these shoes. And then you just buy the shoes. It shouldn't be a hassle about, I don't want no bitch buying my baby no shoes. It shouldn't be no, no drama, no weird shit going on. Like none of that. And going back to like my pride issues, I'm gonna be honest. I'm understanding that the older that I get, the more I have to be open to dating a man with kids. But if I had it my way, no, I want you to come with no kids because I want to build my own family. I don't want to share a baby daddy. I don't, I don't want to share an ex-husband or anything of that nature. I don't want to do none of that. I don't want to do none of that. I want my own shit. I want my own family. I don't want to have to co-parent with nobody. I, I don't want that shit at all. At motherfucking all. So just based off of the pain that this man has inflicted on me, based off of things of that nature when dealing with the children, I don't have a desire to get to know this man again. I don't have a desire to meet this man again. I have no desire to do anything with this man again like I don't even want to be friends I just would prefer we do what we've been doing you live your life I live mine and that's just it and we can say our highs and goodbyes because I'm now at a point where like I'm not ready to rip his head off but you know like as far as like us actually being in close proximity being cool being friendly no we can be cordial but it, it's never it's never gonna be nothing like that ever again you had three chances with me. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't help you, babe. I cannot help you. Okay, and that's gonna be all for the questions. So I thank you guys so much for watching. Again, shout out to all the new people, all the new subscribers. Hopefully you stay after this whole, uh, you know, <laughs> this whole little situation. Just to help me out with the algorithm, don't forget to like this video, comment down below however you feel. Um, honestly, comment down below what you want to see next, you know? Do you want the story time? Do you want the wig review? Do you, like, what, what do you guys want for right now? Because I have my own schedule, but I can tweak it a little bit and figure it out. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And of course, share if you can. So with that being said, I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Back up on my bullshit, back up on the scene, done dealing with you, don't know how to deal with me.